What's up, you guys? And welcome back to Tune In Tuesdays with your favorite gals, the H's. I'm Haley. And I'm Hannah. Let's get synced. Out. How's your vibe? <laughs> the vibe is right, we swell. <laughs> we we have some some guests joining us for the vibe check today. Guys, we both have become new moms over the past week, and we have Haley has gotten this beautiful Australian Shepherd, perfect little baby boy sitting at a what is he eight and a half weeks now he's he's about nine weeks nine weeks angel boy can he say hello to the cast remy you want to remy. get the cast a- <laughs> lick it <laughs> i scratched it <laughs> and then we have little nelson he is oh getting up on my shoulder now he is a little over six weeks, plump little golden retriever boy here. Say hello. That was me trying to get him to do it. Oh, he's licking. <laughs> he's licking. And he's biting a little bit. Wow. Good boy. I'm going to take that as the vibe is good. The vibe is good over here. <laughs> we're a little sleepy. How are you? We're sleeping a little bit less, but we're doing good. <laughs> I'm doing well. The serotonin levels are still being. They're good. good. Same, same, same. You know what, though? I feel like they help with that so much. Oh, yeah. Little Rem Rem's doing good. He's going to sleep about 11, waking up about a 7.30 sharp with a little, meet mom, time to feed me. But otherwise, we're doing so good and we're so yeah. cute. I can't even be mad. He's Any more comments good. for the cast, Rem? Nothing. No, I know. He's, he's so I know. Good. Nelson is, he's actually down and it's actually the cutest sight. Zach is out peeking through the door, like <laughs> giving me thumbs up, like, okay, he's good. He's such a good daddy. And Nelson just laid down. So he's, he's, he doesn't want to talk to you guys. <laughs> he's like <laughs> checked out, checked out. You know, that one down for a little sploot. These, these are the, the sons of the sissies. <laughs> <laughs> the sissy sons, if you will. How well, how's the vibe, Han? The vibe is really good. It's really good. I mean, the current state of everything. I mean, I think everybody is still just anticipating the vaccine. Mm. You know, it's got its approval. We're waiting for our round of we can get it. There's definitely hand handfuls of people who need to get it prior to us. But how's the vibe for you? And like I said, Nelson has just added to the vibe. I mean, good, good, good. Happy one. Good. I'm, uh, I'm in Raleigh at the moment. Yes. I'll stay on the job interview, friends, for all of you loyal listeners. We have secured the bag. Ching, 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 ching. <laughs> I, I wanted to go for a money counter, but I was like, <laughs> but I didn't know what to do. That probably sounded like a cat. <laughs> it's like a flat tire. That's so good. Congratulations. I already, I already knew this is not going to be me. But no, that's amazing. Seriously, I'm so yes. proud of you. Might be popping up in a new Was city. this the one? Wait a second. This was the one where you told me about the interview where <laughs> you like got ready, my girl, winged eyeliner, hair looking snatched, you know, beautiful yeah. blouse, ready to flex, stunt, yep. stunt, Julie, stunt, stunt. <laughs> <laughs> she get it from her mama. She came in guns blazing and it was a panel interview, right? There was three others interviewing you and it was a Zoom style interview and my gal gal was the only one video on. She said, what's good? <laughs> I entered, <laughs> entered the chat. No one else had video on. I said, cool. We started the interview and I, I was like, like, yeah, we're not going to turn our cameras on. And I was like, well, I hope you guys enjoy the visual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is amazing. Um, but did you, did you keep your video on the whole time? I sure did. I love you. I was like, um, I mean, it was too late at that point. I can't just be like, nah, I'm going to exit the chat. I had put too much work into myself. Yeah. Yeah. 
So. I, that's so exciting. I'm so excited for you. Thanks, Han. Yes, very excited. Might be popping up in a city near you soon, friends. So yes. still bringing you that fresh, fresh though. No worries. Shout out to modern day technology and a little squad cast, right? Uh, that is how we do our remote recording. We love the squaddy on the potty. You know what I'm saying? It. Yes. Good time. That, Good time. That helps with healthy movements. <laughs> <laughs> Get yourself a squatty potty for Christmas. It's a great time. The good times, good times. All right. I know right. we've been missing each other. We haven't seen each other as much as what we normally do. It's been a minute. It's been like, well, we've been so busy. It was like the last time we recorded with Dr. H. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Dr. H. Amazing lady. We Love it. And such great feedback. Yes. Um, we're already so interested, like we said, and having other things coming up. Um, oh my God, we didn't clink. We didn't clink. Do you have a clinky? Are you drinky? You want to do a guessy? Oh my God. My girl is look out that bud light, baby. Is drinking that bud light bud light, baby. And I'm drinking a little ginger spice tea. So mm. Set it off with a little clink. You ready? We tried. We tried. I already know we've set the standard insanely low. So. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen Han since last week. So Nelson was planned. Their puppy, the golden retriever, was planned for several weeks. Like they were totally surprised. <laughs> they were ready. He was a planned baby. Now Remy, on the other hand, he was kind of that unexpected child. I saw him. Yeah. Online. Nevertheless, still very wanted. <laughs> very so wanted. <laughs> wanted. <laughs> I saw him online and right after we finished up our interview with Dr. H, I said We literally skirted out on two wheels, like took the unplugged the microphone, downloaded like <laughs> everything we needed to do, co- closed the computer and ran out the door. Yup. They said someone else is on their way to get him. I said, not anymore. Yeah pedal to the floorboard and mm-hmm. funny story behind that when we rolled up sketchy cvs parking lot by the dumpster mm-hmm. and homie brought the wrong dog the first mm-hmm. <laughs> actually Haley got out and it was walking up and we were kind of like i thought to myself i said that's a little baby to already had a haircut so short like you know when you see kids get like the buzz cut and you're like ooh, i don't know about the buzz cut and Haley looked at this man and goes, I mean, it's cute, but that's not the right dog. <laughs> uh, Completely so different bad. dog. I said, Mm-mm, this is not going to do. And he was like, oh, you wanted the Aussie? I was like, yes, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. And he was like, I'll be right back. I'm like six minutes up the road, but you're going to have to give me that other dog. And I'm, um, I'm in my grandma's van. And we were like, Okay. We pulled off and we kind of thought for a second, we were like, he's not coming back. <laughs> we're never seeing this gentleman ever again. Never. He's out on us. But he came kind back. Of rude, too, honestly. A little rude, but nonetheless. Secured the pup. Secured the pup. We're about to pop up at the brewery. Pop but- up. Guess who? <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we'll post some pics on the gram of the, the new additions. But oh, God. You guys are going to melt. They are honestly so cute. Disgusting how cute. Disgusting. The same puppies. I know. But like you once again, sink, 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 sink. sink we sink. do everything. Sink, 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 sink. <laughs> <laughs> and puppies haven't met yet. Maybe we'll um maybe we'll 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 post their interactions. Oh yeah. Got, got to. Got to. They're gonna, be, they're gonna be growing up being besties together. Besties for the rest of you. Yeah. So we've we've also discussed our season one is nearing an end. Yes. An amazing journey. It has been we're going to roll it out for 15 episodes. Yep. Here we are, episode 13. Yup. Crazy times. I feel like it has gone by so quick, but then you sit there and think our first episode was what, September 21st? Yeah. I mean, it's, I guess it's really only been like two months and some change, but it it, it feels like it's been longer, but it feels yeah. like it's been shorter. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I know. I know. I know. I don't know crazy but, but it's, it's so exciting we have we do have some great stuff we wanted to go ahead and map out the rest of the season we're not going to give yes. any spoilers but we're so excited for the things that are coming up we're excited for what we're discussing in you know this week's episode mm-hmm. um, as well as the the two to follow and especially the finale 
the I'll finale. I'll start it with that one. Yes. And more giveaways to come, more guests to come, more yes. fun to be had. Yeah. We are just overjoyed and super excited. So, um, but today, today, folks, as you all know, we are in the crisis times. Still in the crises times. Yes. Yeah, if, you know. if you're just skipping or just joining us for this episode, check out our our episode called The Crisis. And uh, if you don't know already, we're talking about the Rona. Yeah, let's do a little let's do a little crisis check in. Right? Yes, a little mental health check in. It's it's been a while. You know, we started talking about the Rona. One of our first episodes, we we kind of let y'all in on our perspective on how that was, but. I don't think anyone is still anticipated we would still be talking about the Rona or just everything that's been going on. We got businesses closing. We got Thanksgivings canceled. I didn't get to see my extended family for Thanksgiving because my, my mom was just worried somebody would get sick or she would, she would get sick or, you know, just a lot of risk factors going on with bigger gatherings. So we didn't see mm-hmm. each other for Thanksgiving. It was just, it looked a little bit different this year. And I just think some people are probably really struggling right now. Yeah. More than before. Cause it's kind of getting to a point where it was like, where the hell is the end? Right. I'm crying. Yes. <laughs> yeah. As we're moms. Okay. The pup dreams. He's he's like, I'm not well, mom. All I've known is the crisis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, these 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 2020 pups are torn from a different claw. Yes, but um, yeah, it's tough because now it's getting kind of to the point where it's like, where is the end of this? Where and, is it? And it's onset. You know, we've we've talked about the mental health of it, and it it has onset this depression that maybe people didn't even recognize that they had. Yeah. I mean, especially for me and I've talked to Hannah a little bit about this, but it's just been an interesting time. I would consider myself very much so an extrovert. I'm always out doing something, seeing people, having friends over, going to friends' houses, this, that, whatever. And having to go from being on campus, seeing friends, doing all that teaching, all the stuff to not even being able to find a job, <laughs> not a problem anymore. But yeah. for a lot of people, <laughs> for a lot of people, that is the reality. They've lost their job. They're not getting to see family or friends. They're not getting to do their normal routine. And mm-hmm. it's just recently, I, I mean, within probably the last like two weeks, I would say I've felt better about just the state that I'm in at the moment. You know, Remy's helped. Obviously, like I look at him every morning and I'm like... <laughs> You can't have a bad day when you have this pup in your life. Like, what is going on? But I I feel for people right now that are struggling, one, with just everything that's going on with coronavirus and if they have any existing, like, anxiety or depression. And what I really want to speak to is anyone that's dealing with depression from the coronavirus and also just depression for this, this season, I feel like this time of year is when a lot of people kind of fall into some seasonal sadness and you add not being able to do like your typical, like holiday traditions with your families. If you guys are exercising, you know, those safety measures that just adds to it because we, we look forward to those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know for me, like I had family members that still got together and they reached out and they're like, we we missed you at Thanksgiving. And not that I, it made me feel bad necessarily, but it was just a reminder of like, this is out of the norm. And I think with the This time of year, it's starting to get colder out, starting to get darker sooner. People are just kind of like... That's already the saddies right there. Yeah. I mean, I hate when it gets dark at like 4.30 in the afternoon. I feel like it's 9 o'clock when it's really 5. And I'm like, oh, I guess it's time for bed. Look at my watch. And I'm like, "Mm, no, that's it's it's 6.30. And I, I think a lot of people are are struggling right now. Just the seasonal depression coupled with coronavirus, being isolated, not really knowing how to navigate the situation. Like normally people I think have more access to their friends and family, but right now the way it's looking, to be honest, folks, I think it's about to shut down. Yeah. And I think a lot of people thought we might've been out of the woods with that. And now it's kind of looking like, 
We're not out of the woods. We are nowhere close. We're to still in the woods. deciduous forest. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I think a lot of the depression and anxiety right now stems from knowing, not knowing like what's next. Yeah. Like you said, like when is, when is coronavirus going to be over? When am I going to be able to go and hang out with my friends and re-enjoy my quote unquote normal lifestyle? Don't know. And you're not having to constantly worry about was like, oh my gosh, is so-and-so exposed? Have I potentially been exposed? Has? Oh yeah. That's been the worst part for me, honestly. Like I keep my circle very close. I see my my family members, my brother, my mom, my dad. I see Jake. I see Hannah and Zach when we get together to record the podcast. And then I might see one of my girlfriends that I work with. That's about it. Uh-huh. And I kept it very tight and close. Yeah. Time. Because I think for me personally, it's not that I'm necessarily worried about getting sick. I mean, obviously I don't want to get sick. Being sick sucks, but I know I would be okay. I know I would be fine, but I have a very like good immune system. I'm rarely ill. Uh, hopefully I would be okay. I'm young. However, on the other hand, my mom who is cancer survivor, huh? she has a heart condition, and my dad has a heart condition also. And she's also the caretaker for my grandparents who are in their nineties. Like they're, they're getting very old. So yeah. I get sick. She gets sick. She gets them sick. That's the main concern for me. So I keep the circle very, very tight. And besides those like handful of people hand, you know, maybe five, six, seven people that I constantly expose myself to. That's it. Yeah. I'm still thinking about like coronavirus and well, not, not just the sadness that comes along with it, but like, you know, a lot of the times people like to hang out with their friends to keep them happy or, you know, there are people who enjoy dating me for one. I think dating is trash. I don't like dating anybody. I hate those like brand new conversations of somebody not knowing me. I like getting to know people. Don't get me wrong. Right. Love Getting to know people love getting to know you questions, but like, uh, no, thank God, you know, like don't have to do that. But like, are, are people dating right now? We, I don't know. I know I'm some dating people, my mans. <laughs> <laughs> I know some people are dating right now. And I mean, I'm not going to say that I wasn't dating in the very like early, early stages of coronavirus. Cause I was, I was like talking to different people, not really going on dates because if I get a vibe from you that it's not going to go anywhere, I'm not going to go on a date with you. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to waste my time. But I think people are are out here dating and good for them. Honestly, I think it's really difficult unless they just, you know, they're kind of indifferent about going and seeing each other. Probably not something I would do, to be honest, just because I don't know what the person I'm talking to does on their daily basis or who they're around. My, my question is like, so if you're dating somebody casually, right? Mm-hmm. Like maybe you're hitting them up and you're hanging out with them once a week, you know, once to twice every other week. I don't really know. It's still like you guys aren't together, but you're, I'm just, I'm going to still call that dating. You're hanging out, right? Who is that person dating or hanging out with when they're not dating or hanging out with you? Who's to know? They probably don't know. That's like the alarming part for me. Yeah. It's, it's not for me, but Hey, People need love out here, so y'all do what you gotta do. But I can only imagine, like, I don't live by myself. I know Hannah obviously doesn't live by herself either. No. She's a huzz. But I think people that probably are, don't have a roommate, don't have a dog, don't have someone they can hang out with, are probably getting hit the hardest by the seasonal depression and just the isolation caused by coronavirus on top of that. I can only imagine. So I, I feel for you, I guess some of my advice to best navigate the seasonal saddies and just any general depression during this time right now, what has helped me because I've been very open with Hannah about the fact that I feel like I've gone through um, some seasonal depression battles of my own, as I just mentioned with unemployment not being able to do kind of my normal routine and just Mm -hmm. everything's very weird right now. Like my best advice is get out of bed, like get out, go for a walk, do something every day, even if it's yes. Like I've had days, especially recently where I will do, I will not even leave my room. I'll go downstairs. I'll grab something to eat 
And then I'm just chilling in bed all day. And I think that is I very... I, I miss those days though, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone needs a good rest day, but when you, it's accompanied by the feeling of I don't have purpose or like I'm not doing anything productive or it, it just, it's not because you're resting or you're enjoying your time, your downtime. It's because you're sad or you don't feel meaningful. I think that becomes a little bit toxic or can breed a toxic uh, mood. My best advice is get outside, take a 10 minute walk or, or just get outside, sit outside and breathe fresh air. As cliche as that sounds, I feel like it helps so, so much. Like just clear your mind, get in a different headspace. I saw, I'm always bringing up memes or like quotes that I saw, but there was something, it said something along the lines of you can't you can't grow in the same environment that you were damaged in essentially, or like the, the the toxic environment you're coming from to grow, you need to change that environment. So if your crutch is sitting in bed, kind of reflecting on the fact that you are down or feeling depressed, change the scenery, see what that will do for your mental state. It's helped me tremendously. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you can't get outside, do something for yourself, right? You don't Mm -hmm. have to clean your whole house top to bottom. Maybe do a chore that you haven't done in a while, like your baseboards, right? Mm-hmm. Or those baseboards. dusting that fan blade, baby. We know she's caked. We know she's caked. <laughs> Stay busy. My, yeah. I know for me also trying to maintain a little bit of a schedule or, you know, saying I'm going to sleep in a little bit, whatever, 10, if that's mm-hmm. you're sleeping in, do that. And then kind of try to set a new goal for each day. Like Hannah said, today I'm going to do the baseboards. Tomorrow I'm going to go through my closet and I'm going to collect all the things I don't wear and donate them to Goodwill. Whatever it is, try to stay busy because otherwise your mind is just literally marinating in all of the the things that you don't feel worthy of or the things that are bringing you down. But also, it's, 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 oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying, I think it's good to like have something to do. Keep yeah. your mind off of it. Stay in motion. Little tasks at a time though. Don't, don't like, don't think, oh, I got to do this, 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 this. If you don't right. for what? Like stay busy, but. Yeah. Dang. Rome was not built in a day. No. But also treat yourself too. Mm -hmm. I feel like some people think that they're not worthy of that nice pair of shoes they've been having their eyes on, or they're not worthy of that ice cream for dessert or whatever, whatever. If you are down, do what you want to do, you know, do what makes you happy. If you're really worried about gaining weight during Corona, who cares? Eat what you want to eat. Baby boy, baby girl, all the babies. (laughs) <laughs> Except our babies, they're on strict diets with fancy tummies. <laughs> yeah. On that Purina Pro plan, baby. I mean, if you want my best advice, get a puppy. They'll get you uh, out of bed. <laughs> I'll be doing something. You, like, you'll be doing something. It does something for the mental, for oh, sure. Oh, gosh. And the heart. I feel like it's amazing. It really is amazing. So Nelson is like my first dog that I've had as an adult. Mm-hmm. I had a dog when I was little, like really little. But... He has definitely just added so much sweet joy into my life. Sweet baby. <laughs> I know. I wake up every morning and I let little Rem Rem out of his cage and he runs up to me like he yeah. hasn't seen me in a year. And I'm like, this is what it's all about right here. Yeah. Uh, but if you're not, I mean, but that's what brings us joy, right? So along mm-hmm. with the seasonal sadness, like sometimes joy just doesn't find you, right? You mm-hmm. have to go out and seek it and find it. And you find joy in doing the things that you love and the things that you care, care about. My words are fucked. So, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that means you want to get lost in nature. Don't really get lost. The sissies don't advocate for that. Yeah. But maybe you want to go explore. Maybe you do. Maybe you're considering a pet. Start with a fish. If you're a cat person, get a cat. They're very simple and easy. Mm-hmm. Low maintenance. If you're weird, tarantulas. Oh, <laughs> I heard they like to chill for hours. I'm not down for that. Scary. <laughs> it's not for me, sis. It's not for me. Yeah, I think that's that's good advice. Also, like, and then especially just, if you have the downtime, do get back into something that you enjoy. Yeah, do something you like. Like, who gives a shit if you're good at it? Like, get a canvas, start painting. Get a coloring mm. book. Like. 
do whatever. Yeah. Also like FaceTime your friends. I know for me, like Hannah and I mentioned this in our previous talk about the Rona that we've enjoyed reaching out to people and kind of staying connected with our friends, whether it's just a phone call or Mm -hmm. FaceTime or, you know, just talking to them on Instagram or whatever and connecting like it's so important. And If you are feeling a little bit sad during this time, know that you're not alone Mm -hmm. and check on your pals because I can guarantee they're probably feeling similar but not saying much about it because that's that's kind of the stigma around depression is like people have a hard time voicing it. And I promise you a lot of people are struggling right now, myself included. Like I've had days where I've struggled. So Mm -hmm. if you guys need someone to talk to, the sink sissies got you. Mm Mm-hmm. We got, we got you. you. Another part of finding joy, start a podcast. This has brought so much joy into my life. We've we've had frustrating moments where we're like, why is this not working? Yeah. Right? I mean, <laughs> side of it, mainly the tech side. Yeah. I mean, it's been really great uh, just having an outlet for, for me. And I think I speak for Hannah as well, just coming on here and kind of having a space and the feedback's the best part, right? So mm. when we're talking about depression or we're talking about things we wish we would have done when we were younger, or we're talking about feminine health and you guys are reaching out like, Oh, I love that episode. Oh, I love what you said. It resonated with me. Like you guys are doing great. That's the best part. Like feel like your voice is heard. Finding out one of my gal pals that I have known pretty much the majority of my life goes to the same doctor that mm-hmm. I go to. I mean, just, just having that connection with people. I would have never known mm-hmm. that. When would mm-hmm. her and I have ever discussed? She did my portraits for my bridals. Oh, okay. Amazing photographer. Yes. Kayla Hauser, photography. Hit her up. She's amazing. We'll link her in the, the description. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Linked. Link, link. <laughs> sing, sing. Um, she is literally, so if you're the type of person, wow, we're really segueing off. If you're the type of person where you're getting pictures taken, maybe with her significant other, maybe by yourself, Maybe you want to just do pictures. It doesn't matter. Do you? She will make you feel so comfortable. Because if you think about it as an adult, you're like, oh my God, it's so weird. I'm like smiling and posing for another adult to take my picture that, you know, I might not know that well. And it might be weird. I don't know. You know, not a lot of people are used to being in front of cameras. I mean, the thing says these are, we did a little photo shoot. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. kidding. We pretty much look awkward in the majority of the pictures because that's us. We had some bang bang. We did. We did. Got to plug our, our loyal sync listeners. So check out her photog if you're interested. Yes. But yeah, if you're, like I said, basically if you're struggling right now, you are not alone. And I want to mention too, I think the holidays in general are a hard, are a hard time for a lot of people, coronavirus or not. I think so. Yeah. Especially people that have experienced recent loss or a family member has passed away or maybe they have absent family members or they don't have family members. Yeah. I, th- I think it's really hard. And that coupled with just, like I said, the seasonal depression, Corona, I, I know people out there are taking it really hard, but don't, don't feel like you have to be happy all the time either. We're not oh. saying like, you guys need to stop being depressed. And- Smile. Smile. <laughs> oh God. If someone tells me to smile, I'm doing the exact opposite. But no. you know, it, if you don't feel okay, that is 100 percent fine. That's but good. I, and not no, it's not good that you don't feel okay. I'm like, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's gonna pass. It's good. Like yeah. let it ride out. If you don't want to start a podcast, I recommend like journaling or just talking to a friend and letting them know. Talking it out is one of the best ways I feel like people get their feelings out there and they get a release. They feel like some kind of release. And if you don't want to talk to somebody, journal. Talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. I talk to myself too much, to be honest. Anything else you want to add about the seasonal saddies, hand? The only thing I want to add is during the seasonal saddies, it's probably more so going to be the people that you miss and maybe the things that you're doing, you know, like, I don't know, people have a lot of traditions. Maybe they go ice skating. They may, maybe they do Christmas lights. And though these things are going on, like we said, it might be, you're not doing it with the same people. Reach out to those people. Mm -hmm. Modern day technology is, I mean, it's there for your benefit and for your use and stuff. FaceTime your friends, FaceTime your family. You don't have to sit on there with them long. You don't have to be all spruced up in your (laughs) Sunday's best. 
You can be braless <laughs> like us right now. <laughs> T-shirt. What's good? You know how we do? Shaking tits, not giving shits. <laughs> okay. That's not the 2021 vibe. I don't know what is. I'm so here for it. But yes, as always, if y'all need someone to talk to, vent to, hit us in the DM, hit us in the email. We will get back to you. Yep. We will. Faux show. Faux show. We will. So our, you know, the season, right? Season one. We're going to take a little, did we talk about how long we're going to be gone for? Little, little hiatus for, for about a month or so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, See? Mm-hmm. Play it by ear. I mean, if you guys are missing us so much, we get it. Okay. We'll come back. Come on. <laughs> yeah. But. Fine, fine. Autographs. Everyone. One at a time. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's fine. We are fine. But yeah, I guess we should answer the rest of our advice box questions. Yes, yeah, let's do it. I haven't, I honestly, not gonna lie to you guys, I have not been in the advice box in a while. So this is gonna be just on a whim. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think we have like three questions that we have not answered yet. Uh-huh. So I think we're just gonna slay them. We're just gonna go for it. We're gonna Gay go there. Battle. Gay is battle. <laughs> yeah. battle. Okay, go ahead. So to start, the first one, real simple. Moe's versus Chipotle. Who was the winner? What category are we talking? What? I, oh, that's a good, I mean, just overall. Rice, Chipotle. Wait, who has the, who has like the cilantro lime rice? Girl, I have no idea. I haven't eaten at Moe's or Chipotle in probably three or four years, so mm. I am completely useless to this. I question. simply say Moe's. I do love the Chipotle, like, like the lime rice, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but I say Moe's based solely on queso. That's valid. Queso is the make or break. And then, I per- yeah. Personally, I've eaten way more salsaritas than Moe's or Chipotle because mm-hmm. when I was on campus at UNCC – that's what they had. So me and my gal used to eat sauceritas like twice. Tori and I would go smack Bojangles daily. <laughs> yes. Thanks. That mac and cheese, that dehydrated mac, girl. All right. So the next question from our boxy box is how do you deal with like overly competitive people? Yikes. It depends on what they're competitive at and, like, what, like, are we talking, like, we're playing Cards Against Humanity or we're playing, like, Pictionary um, or we, like, but, but, (laughs) like, what are we doing? Because if you're too competitive, I'm going to laugh right in your damn face. Yeah, plus, like, especially when it's something not serious like that, that's just a fun kill. Yeah, I'm going to look at you and say, how much are you making doing this? Are you a professional at right. what you are being competitive at? Like, and even like, then, come on. I think that competition, like friendly competition is, is good. Like it's fun. Like it keeps people engaged and like friendly competition is a good time. But if we're out here playing putt putt and you're getting really worked up over the fact that. Napping, snapping putters on me. <laughs> like, what are you doing? I mean, oh, that's a little immature in my opinion. Like I think, especially as a 25 year old woman, like that's not something I necessarily see myself doing now. I don't know though. Maybe some people are, are really competitive and maybe that's why you're asking this question. But for me, I think that overly competitive people become an issue when it's work related mm-hmm. or you're working in a group and you have one person in the group that is just like, has to be on top, always has to win, always has to have the best because then you're just fucking up the group vibe. Like right. everybody else is going to, you're on one page and everybody else is on a completely different page. Cause you have to be in charge or the best or superior to everyone else. I've definitely been in situations where I've been in a group or around peers that were super competitive and it really just kills, kills the vibe. Yeah. I, um, I think I'm more competitive with myself than I am with other people. Like Mm -hmm. my competition with myself is being better than what I was the last time. Yes, uh, or just better than what I know I can be at something. Mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. the uh, cornhole, flip cup, croquet. I mean, 
<laughs> yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like yeah, pushes it's pushing you to, to be personally better, but my best advice to, with how to deal with people that are just over the top mm-hmm. competitive is try to tune that out as much as possible because that energy, like I said, if it's friendly competition, whatever, honestly, just sorry. at them and with them about it, about it because it's comical. Yeah. And if it's really to a point where it's next level, try to tune that out as much as possible, mm-hmm. you know, but their ego is probably, just driving them to want to be on top and maybe they are, maybe they're not, but don't, don't let them think that it bothers you because I think that's what drives them to keep doing it. It's like, Oh, they were all something's happened to them in their life where they've been conditioned to do that to others. Right. Right. They probably haven't received a lot of attention in other areas. So if they find an area that they're excelling in or whatever, they're probably going to be very competitive in that area because they might have something to prove or you, you know, like you said, conditioned in some other area. I would just try to tune it out mm-hmm. as, as much as you can. Obviously they, they have some motive for, for that nature. But as far as I'm concerned for the listeners, my best advice is just don't, don't pay it any mind. Like, no, it's fine. Nope. It's all fine. They're okay. Fine. Next question. You guys love the relationship advice from us. <laughs> I'm thrilled. I don't know why. I mean, Hannah's married. Like I said, she secured the bags. She secured the hubs. I'm still out here winging it. So if you guys like my advice, I don't know what to tell you. I hope it's good. <laughs> but this one says, I've been with my boyfriend for a significant amount of time. And there's no doubt in my mind that he loves me to no end. However, he has trouble verbally apologizing for things when he's wrong. He has ways of apologizing, but it's never straight out saying, I'm sorry. And that bothers me. I would rather have a verbal apology than an action. Should I accept accept his form of apology and take it for what it is or insist on a verbal apology? Maybe it's a pride thing or a man thing. I don't know. Love you, ladies. Thank you. First of all, love you. Love you, love you. Second of all, are these behaviors and actions that are, you know, even though he doesn't say sorry directly, are they habitual? Are they reoccurring? Mm-hmm. But backtrack a little bit, rewind. I think anytime anybody is sorry for something, people have different ways of expressing it. Saying mm-hmm. I'm sorry is not the only way to show that you're sorry or to be sorry or to feel sorry or to convey like, hey, I am sorry for this. Mm-hmm. Just because you feel in yourself, this is what I need. Like I need to hear I'm sorry. Um, you should communicate that, right? Yeah. Because, but you also need to recognize what they do to show you that they're sorry. Like Haley, I see that you do X, you know, like I know that you did X, Y, Z to show me that you were sorry about whatever the incident was, but what I do need from you also like myself is to hear that you're sorry because I see it and I feel it, but hearing it is also important for me. Yeah, I have to agree. And I think this just comes back to like, what we're always saying open conversation, honesty, like sitting your partner down and saying, I get that you like to do things for me when uh, to apologize, but all I really want to hear from you is I'm sorry. And to this person, whoever's asking this, you're not asking for a lot. You're really not. Don't, don't feel like you're asking for a lot. And if your partner, you know, you've expressed to them, I appreciate the things that you do for me to, to tell me that you are sorry, but I really like you to apologize to me verbally. That is what makes me feel like you are genuinely remorseful for whatever happened and they cannot do that. You are not asking for a lot. I do think that you have a right to be like, or ask them what, you know, why can't you say that to me now? I, I think that that's a conversation you need to have. I don't think that you're asking a lot by wanting a verbal apology for me personally. I like a little bit of both. I want you to say sorry, but I also want you to show me that you are sorry. Mm-hmm. Cause so sometimes, the- sometimes in the reverse, like you're saying, like sometimes it's easy to be like, Oh, sorry. Right. That's right. It. Right. There's that's it. So it's kind of like, mm. and for me, like the motto for 2020 and for 2021 has been, we are no longer accepting verbal apologies, only changed behavior. We already said it. We've been said it right. We've been, been said it. it. So I think 
I would not be deterred by the fact that they're not saying they're sorry to you because if they're showing it to you and they're acting on it, then I do think that they are genuinely sincere in the fact that they are sorry. Mm -hmm. Now, if you really just need to hear the words, babe, I'm sorry for ABC, whatever the case may be, let them know that. I think that if they are already going out of their way to show you they're sorry, I don't think they'll have any problem giving you the verbal validation that you're looking yeah. for. Yeah, and let it me just make. Oh, go, go ahead. Sorry. No, you go, 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 go. I was just saying it. It doesn't seem to me that that would be an issue, considering they're already going so far to sh- try to show you that. And if that's an issue, y'all need to have a conversation about why and just be like, okay, if you're not comfortable saying that, how, where, where do we meet in the middle? Yeah. You know, like and pals, and- pals, apologies. I'm sorry's aren't my bads. Okay. Take uh-huh. my bad, go to the bus stop, pick your suitcase up and get on the damn bus because you cannot say my bad. No, my bad. I mean, like, come on, sit down, be an adult and If you're sorry for something, be sorry, but also accountability, right? So if this person wasn't raised on the notion of being accountable when they are sorry for their actions and behaviors, I hate, I hate that, that thing of like kids growing up and it's like, say, I'm sorry, say, I'm sorry. Cause sometimes you're not sorry. Like, hell no, I'm not sorry for hitting you with that fire truck. You piss me slam off. Mm-hmm. But like, you don't have to be forced to say, I'm sorry, but if you truly feel it and mean it, it is good to express that because we're not mind readers. We're human. Right. We are humans. Right. Yes. And like I said, if you're, if you have not ex- said to your partner, I want a verbal apology from you, they can't read your mind, right? Like they don't know that that's what you want. So have that conversation and see what they say. Mm-hmm. If, if they're like, that's just not how I apologize. I would rather show you that I'm apologetic. Gonna have to find somewhere to meet in the middle. You're not asking a lot though. I really think they should be able to just tell you they're sorry if they, if they genuinely are, but that sorry needs to be accompanied by some changed behavior in my opinion. Yeah. For me. For sure. Anything else you want to add on on that hand? Mm, I think that's it. I think just recognize recognizing that recognizing, <laughs> recognizing, recognizing. <laughs> I think that just being able to recognize that they are sorry, and people love different people express things different, and being mm-hmm. like, you know, like that's cool too. That's okay. Um, Got to be open and honest, mm-hmm. and that's it. Just, just. Find your niche, what works for your, for your, for your relationship and that communication aspect of God, feelings are so important. And once you navigate that, that journey of just simply communicating your own feelings, guys, it's so hard to do as an adult, Mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're sweeping under the rug, right? You're Mm -hmm. fine. Put a smile on. You're good. Right. And you, it says they've been with this significant other their boyfriend for a, a, a quite some time. I guarantee you, if you sit down and tell them how you're feeling, they're not going to be like, Oh, this is too much for me. <laughs> like I gotta, gotta step away. That's not going to happen. Just, you have nothing to lose. Go for it. Tell them what you need. Tell them what you need. Yeah. All right. This is going to wrap it up for our advice for season one. Wow. So yeah. if you guys have any questions for us for season two, put them in the box And we will definitely get you an answer. This one uh, hits home for me personally. So, and this listener asked, how do I deal with a social media addiction? I spend way too much time on my phone. Simple, simple answer. Get a pup. I have (laughs) no time to be on my phone now. Zero. 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 <laughs> that is so true. If I'm not posting a picture of Remy, I'm not really on my phone because I'm too worried about him getting into the wires, electrocuting himself. Now my phone is also, yeah, like killing himself, like on everyday household items. Now, like <laughs> instead of scrolling on my phone, chilling, like, you know, you're watching TV. Okay. You'll scroll, whatever. My camera roll is full. I just take pictures of him. He's sleeping pictures. He's walking blurry ass pictures. He's chewing on toys, pictures, like, just a camera roll. I'm like, wow, this is a mom device now. <laughs> this is literally, 
I mean, this resonates with me so much though, because like I mentioned, was been unemployed for some time. Oh yeah. Can't go out. Can't do a lot of things. Makes me just sit here on my phone. Like got to see what everyone else is oh, doing. Yeah. I can't do anything. So I've, I've picked up a bit of a social media addiction myself. And just like last week or the week before I made myself go cold Turkey, like no social media besides our podcast page. Cause we were running the giveaway. Mm-hmm. I like deactivated or like signed out of my personal Instagram page, signed out of my Facebook page. And I was like, I'm going to give myself a week to just not spend on my social media. And I will tell you, Mm -hmm. it was a struggle. Don't get me wrong. It was a struggle because I'm just out of, it's almost a, a reflex. It's not even really like I want to be on social media. It's just when I pick up my phone, I automatically click on Instagram. Like it was getting that bad. It's second but, nature. Yeah. But it was so refreshing to actually do something with all of that time that I was putting into my phone. Mm-hmm. Cause you're, I don't know if you're an iPhone user, I'm not sure how Androids work. They will tell you how much time you spend on your phone. They'll give you like a, a screen time report. And this is how many minutes you spend on this, blah, 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 blah. This is embarrassing, but I was spending almost six hours a day on my phone. What? Mine is worse. Like that, that is six. That is almost two whole days a week that I'm just my nose in my phone. I'm kind of curious. I'm going to look at mine right now. (laughs) Yeah. I saw that and I was like, this could be energy and time better spent doing something else. Yikesies. We're talking (laughs) yikesies. That one said seven hours, 50 minutes. Today is six hours, 10 minutes. It's sad, but, and then it gives you like the breakdown, right? So like, (laughs) An hour and one minute on Instagram, and I'm telling an you. hour and three minutes in text messages, right? Even just like being texting right. on your phone. Yeah, I mean, I've struggled with that also, just because these these apps are geared to suck us in. These designers and creators, mm-hmm. they know what they're doing. Yeah, even they are affected by it. The social dilemma that brings us right back to the social dilemma being yeah addicted to your social media. No, it couples well with our talk about seasonal depression or just like coping with depression. Mm -hmm. Your phone, I swear, is a big source Mm -hmm. of that. Like we've talked about a million times, the comparison trap and just sitting on here and like needing a like or needing a comment when you post a picture. Like it feels shitty when someone doesn't, your picture doesn't get as liked as you thought it was like worthy of, you know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? You're like, well... I must not be cute. I must not be Mm -hmm. this, that, whatever. Yeah. So you're exactly right. I think just, just like we said with keeping yourself out of that depression, you got to keep yourself out of that social media, right? Do those things that you enjoy, the things that you enjoy, go for a walk, go hike Mm -hmm. somewhere, go explore Mm -hmm. something new, go paint, go draw, go see something, go Go drive to a nearby city that you can take a little day trip to just to drive to the sea, seeing a different place. Yeah. Like I said, staying busy. It's going to be hard at first. They say it really takes like 21 days to break a habit. Now I could have been off Instagram for longer. Admittedly, I could have, but we were doing the giveaway. I wanted to share the giveaway. So I kind of cheated. It got back on Instagram, whatever, whatever. Um, She cheated. (laughs) But it's, it's really hard, and don't think that you're alone in that. A lot of people are sh- struggle with that addiction. I think a lot of people don't even realize they are addicted mm-hmm. because they're just so used to doing it all the time. And until you really sit back and look like, I'm spending six, seven hours a day on my phone, then I, that's when I was like, something's got to change. Yeah. Because that is two days out of the week dedicated to what? Seeing what everybody else is doing. I, that's time I could be investing in myself. Yeah, fucking up our retinas. <laughs> literally get you some blue light glasses for real. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't, I guess for me, the best way to approach that is one acceptance, <laughs> like anything else, except the fact that you might be spending too much time on your phone. Sounds like you're doing that. Cause you're already asking us how you, yeah. what's the steps, you know, take a look, be reflective, be like, yeah, I think I spent too much time on it and then do what is manageable for you. If it's, I'm going to deactivate Instagram first, do that. Still spend some time on Facebook, Snapchat, whatever week after that, 
spent, take some time off from Facebook. Week after that, take some time off from Snapchat or just be like, I'm going to dedicate an hour and a half a day to social media, maybe 30 minutes before you get up in the morning, 30 minutes before you go to bed or 20 minutes on your lunch break at work. And the rest of the time, do you? Yeah. It's also part of that. It's that cognitive choice, right? Like I've, I have told myself even recently within the last, I would say within the last three to four weeks, I have told myself, put your phone down, Mm -hmm. put your phone down. I'll even set it like face down. Sometimes I turn it off. Most of the time it's on DND. Do not disturb me. I'm busy. (laughs) <laughs> Just kidding. But I do like, I do try to make that cognitive choice of, okay, Han, that's good. Like set her down, like mm-hmm. set it down. Like Zach will watch me navigate through my phone sometimes. And it'll be like the in and out of all these different apps within a five minutes. He's like, wow, you're really, <laughs> he doesn't do the social media thing, but, um, right. but it is, it is, it, it's addictive and you have to make the choice. Like, okay, put it down, really get invested in this show, get invested in a book, right? Mm -hmm. Find an author that you like and just read a whole bunch of their books, read a different, read a different book, read a new book, read the same book twice. And I think you will find that it's so refreshing actually living in the current moment. Yeah. Not living in what other people did last night on Instagram, not living in the event that's coming up next week, but like actually, being present just made me realize like I've missed out on things, you know, even if I'm just sitting on the couch and my mom's talking to me and I've got my nose in the phone and I'm like, wait, I don't even know what you just said. Like being present. Made I cannot, so sorry. This just, <laughs> I cannot stand being in a room full of people and every like people being on their phones. Yeah. Now, if there's a situation that I'm trying to handle and I need to take care of it, whether it's an email or a text that needs my attention right away, I'm probably not going to be on my phone when I have company. And that's just another disgusting fact and part about social media also. It's so addictive to the point where you are doing your own thing on your own device and you have people who are right in front of you that you could be communicating with. Yeah. But instead, you'd rather be scrolling to see what Philip Johnny Bob is doing my best advice is do what is workable for you. Uh-huh. Don't feel like you have to go cold turkey. I, that's true for almost any addiction. I don't think anyone really advocates for that approach, but do what seems manageable for you and then keep mm-hmm. building. Be like, you know what? I spent three hours on social media today. I'm going to try for two hours and 30 minutes tomorrow and just mm-hmm. taper off or get rid of one of those apps out of the five that you spend way too much time on and, and do, do what, do what seems reasonable because if it's not reasonable, it's not going to work. Yep. It's not going to work. You're not going to follow through. That's my advice. Yeah. I think that's great advice. That's all I got. But I think that's fine. if you guys are struggling with the seasonal saddies, reach out to us. Yeah. It's, it's, it's rough out here and we're, we're all struggling in our own way. So don't feel like you are alone. I hope any and all of that advice was decent. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. If, yeah, it's good. I think it's good. If y'all don't hear from us quick in the, the inbox anymore, it's because we're chasing puppies around. <laughs> oh, we're so busy. We are so busy. But we'll post pictures for y'all. And I think that's going to wrap it up for us, Han. Uh-oh. It's wrapped E13. up. E13 coming at you slamming smack. Bang. All right, pals. Y'all know the drill. Thanks for tuning in with us on our tune in. I can never sing with you. (laughs) I always like. I'm like, okay, we're gonna sing. Tune in Tuesday. There you go. Oh my god. We out, y'all.